I now give the floor to Ms. Berghitz, a teacher at Collins. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, thank you for the inv invitation to speak at this important event. I'm greatly honored. Today, exactly one year ago, I left Bangui on board the last commercial flight to Europe as a prevention measure due to the COVID-19 pandemic. With me were many colleagues from international organizations and some of those that provide medical services to victims of sexual violence. At that time, the prediction was that the weak health system would not be able to deal with a general outbreak of COVID-19. Now, one year on, the official number of COVID cases in the Central African Republic stands at 5,682 confirmed cases with 5,112 recoveries and 75 deaths. Within the UN family, we counted 749 cases and deplore six deaths. Early summer of 2020, most of us who had left returned to the country and resumed their work in the field. Internal flights have long since resumed and humanitarian services continue to operate. With testing rare, COVID-19 looms over the country with an unknown magnitude. The general population does not wear masks and motor taxis carry multiple passengers. Despite continuous sensitization carried out by the mission, there is no social distancing outside the work environment of international organizations. The virus seems a neglected enemy in a place where so many other challenges exist. I've served in MINUSCA for over five years, and unfortunately the COVID-19 crisis we witness is not the only one affecting service provision for victims of grave human rights violations, including sexual violence. Over the past five months, the National Army and bilateral forces carried out military operations against armed groups, in particular against those that formed the Coalition des Patriotes pour le Changement, ahead of the first round of presidential and legislative elections in December last year. Numerous installations of humanitarian organizations were destroyed or occupied by combatants, and hospitals were looted, bringing service provision to a halt. Humanitarian access to many regions have become from risky to impossible due to the numerous thefts of vehicles and bridges being deliberately destroyed. These violent clashes in many parts of the country contrasts with periods of hope and positive developments. On 27 of December, I joined many of my colleagues to observe the election day in Bangui. It was amazing to see the thousands of people streaming to the voting centers, queuing patiently, sometimes for hours, to cast their ballots. And all of the women I talked to were keen to assure me that it didn't matter how long they had to wait, as long as they would be able to exercise their civic duty and vote. In March, during my field visit to Bambari, the women's associations there assured me that they continue to support survivors of sexual violence, despite the fact that their office building could not be used. They had stored all their equipment at the safe place as a preventive measure before the armed groups had invaded the town in December. As senior women's protection advisor, my role is to advise and support MINUSCA civilian, police and military components in implementing the mandate to prevent and respond to conflict-related sexual violence. In my work, I have come to understand two crucial areas that define the extent of the response to conflict-related sexual violence. One is the social obstacles that impede survivors from reporting violations. The other concerns access to justice. In March, two NGOs reported the following, I quote, one of the most common forms of violence suffered by adolescents, which has continued to affect the latter during the recent armed crisis in Boali and Damara, is sexual violence. The attitude of indifference of the community towards this problem appears to further fuel the impunity enjoyed by the perpetrators. In the current crisis situation, this is exacerbated by insecurity and hunger. End of quote. Boali and Damara, are less than 100 kilometers north of Bangui. In more rural areas, other barriers prevent survivors of sexual violence from seeking justice. This includes stigmatization, rejection by the family and community, and reprisals by the perpetrators. 
In the majority of the locations outside Bangui, there is no functional chain of justice, with courts inoperational and prosecutors absent. Equally, in large parts of the country, access to health facilities is difficult or impossible due to weak infrastructure. At this point, I want to speak about some of my most inspiring encounters with civil society and survivors of sexual violence. Our mandate spells out the role of civil society and community leaders in enabling access to services for survivors and shapes our support to partners. While the mission works to strengthen the justice system in the long run, there also has to be a focus on immediate remedies for survivors. One of the first is to restore their dignity. As one NGO partner said to me, we want to show them they are not alone, that there are others in such situation and give them something they can do to improve their confidence. Last year, I visited a project in the north of Bria in the center of the country, developed by MINUSCA's Community Violence Reduction Program. Men and women, some of them survivors of sexual violence, were tending to their plot where they grew vegetables. The women did not want to speak about the violence they had suffered, but they did proudly show me the growth of their plants, the prospect of some income and personal independence, income generating activities to regain control of one's life during the long wait for justice. Traveling in the field can mean you spend eight, five hours for a few kilometers of distance, but roads are the veins of the country, which bring support from the centers to the isolated areas. Where the population has no means to travel, regular visits of the mission and humanitarians connect them to essential services. On our way back from the farming project, our convoy was stopped in a small village along the axis. The village chief was waiting with the father of a girl, a victim of rape, who had walked over 15 kilometers to reach the main road, waiting for us to pass so he could report the crime. I reported the case to UNPOL, which then initiated an investigation. And while that region still awaits the re-establishment of courts and state authorities, our programs and support to local partners are the first steps to hear victims, provide assistance, and restore their sense of confidence and belief in a future where impunity will give way to justice and development. I thank you for your attention. I thank Ms. Colleen for a briefing.